Hey everyone, and welcome to the second part in the series Supercharging Your Kubernetes Deployments with Flux V2 and GitHub. And in this video, uh, we'll take a small detour from uh, Flux V2 and look at Customize, because Customize is heavily used by Flux to deploy your YAML files. And if you have watched the uh, previous video, uh, you know that we discussed the GitOps Toolkit, which is a collection of controllers and APIs that Flux V2 is built upon. And of course, when we are going to deploy YAML files, we'll use the source controller to point to where these YAML files are, and we'll use the customized controller to actually deploy these YAML files. So in the steps that we laid out in the previous video, uh, we are working towards the three last uh, steps and we'll now take a small detour to focus on how Customize uh, works and we'll use that when we deploy our customizations in step four. So let's check out how Customize does its thing. The first thing we have to do is install Customize on our local machine. Remember, I'm using Windows Subsystem for Linux version 2 and I'm also running Ubuntu 18.04 in that. I've also installed Brew for Linux, so I can just use Brew Install Customize to install it. There are, of course, other methods to install it. Just check out customize.io for those other ways. Now, if you read up about Customize, you'll probably find that it's also included in the kubectl tooling. Uh, I generally do not recommend to use Customize as part of kubectl because it can run or it does run uh, a few versions behind the current version of the standalone tool. So use the standalone tool and in my demos, I will also use the standalone tool. If you then uh, execute Customize on your uh, system, you just run the uh, customize command, uh, you'll get this output uh, over here. So it's plain and simple customize that you have to type in. Then of course, there are several commands available. Now we will not focus on all of these commands. There's a lot to uncover here, uh, but we will mainly uh, look at how to use the build command. And let's first check out what you would actually do with that build command in a simple example. When you go to customize.io and you click on the tutorial link over here, uh, you end up in a UI that looks like this. Uh, this is actually meant to play around a bit with uh, YAML files that you have lying around and you want to use customize with them. What you can do, for example, is you can drag and drop YAML files, in my case, a service YAML and a deployment YAML to this canvas over here. Yeah? After you drag and drop the service YAML and the deployment YAML or any other YAML you have, uh, customize.io or this interface will create a customization YAML. Now, my deployment and my service is nothing special. It's a regular deployment that deploys a specific application to a cluster. And there's a service as well that exposes this application via a load balancer. Very normal uh, uh, YAML files. The customization.yaml then just indicates that uh, we might want to do a composition. So we might want to have an output that combines service.yaml and deployment.yaml. What does that mean? That means that if I put these files in a folder and I run the customize build command, that the output of the customize build command will be one YAML file that contains both the service and the deployment. Now, the order in which these, um, the, ser the service and the deployment will be listed, uh, there's some internal order that uh, customize uses for the output. So a service will always be before a deployment. Even when you are switching these resources around, if you start with deployment and then you follow by service, you'll still have in the output, in the final output, you'll still have the service first and the deployment YAML, or the deployment second. Of course, this is an example of a very basic thing you can do with Customize. That's just composing one larger YAML from smaller YAML files. What most people think about when you work with Customize is to do patching. You can see that here indicated by patch. Suppose these are your base files and you then want to create an overlay, as we call it, for your production environment. Well, I can click on my deployment YAML here and suppose that in my production environment, I want to have the requests equal to the limits. Well, you can just click on uh, requests here or CPU here and I can put it at, in this case, 150M. I can also click on memory and put that 
at 150 mi here. What I've now done, I basically created a patch. The patch looks, of course, very similar to a regular deployment, but we only, we only note what we want to change. Yeah? Um, this UI will use the uh, strategic merge patching, as we'll see in a moment. Now, of course, yeah, what will the resulting files look like? What, what do you have to do to create this overlay and to patch what is in your base? Well, when I'm doing save patch here, what you'll get is, first of all, a deployment YAML file for the overlay, right? But then a customization file, customization.yaml, that you also put in that overlay folder. And in this case, it's not a simple listing of resources you want to have in your output. No, in this case, we're basically saying um, include the base files that I have in my dot dot slash base folder. Watch out. What you refer to is a directory or a folder that needs to contain its own customization.yaml file. So not just a folder with a couple of YAML files in it. It needs to have a customization.yaml. So it will use this base, but then on top of that base, use the patches strategic merge option to apply the patch that's in deployment YAML to our base, right? So basically, when you're creating a folder structure, this could be, it's just an example, this could be the folder structure that you have. A deploy folder with a base and an overlay folder, and the base contains the base files, as you see here, and the overlay contains the overlay files. Now, to actually generate, to generate the um, resulting YAML with the patch applied, you would put yourself in the overlay folder and you would then run customize and you would just run customize build. And the output would be yeah, the same output as you had in the base earlier, but in this case, request and limits would be the same because the patch is applied. If you want to actually apply this to your cluster, you could add, of course, you could pipe this all to kubectl, and you could then do apply minus F, like so. And of course, the generated YAML from customized build would be then applied to your cluster. Basically, it's as simple as that. Now, what we'll do in the next steps is to look at a couple of other options that you have with Customize, because we've now just seen the base with the overlay, but there are a couple of other things you can do with Customize as well, and we'll look at that next. So what else can you do with Customize besides these uh, patches? Well, uh, I've opened up my terminal here, and on the right side, you can see a customization.yaml uh, inside a folder called real time app uh, at the left uh, you'll find uh, you'll see me in the real time app uh, folder when i do a listing of that folder there are all sorts of files in here uh, the important files are real time yaml which contains an application uh, more we don't have to know and that application requires a backend which is redis right um, so let's take a look at what we can do with all of this um, first of all, I did not specify a namespace in my resources. So if I check my redis.yaml, you can see my service, it doesn't specify a namespace. My deployment in there doesn't specify a namespace. So in order to specify a namespace, yeah, we can just tell customize, hey, the namespace is my NS. Now it's very important that if you're going to reference a namespace and it does not exist and you want it created, that of course you create a YAML file that creates such a namespace. So in this case, there's a YAML file in the folder called namespace.yaml and it creates a namespace called myNS. And it's of course also important that you refer to this in your resources YAML, otherwise it won't be included in the final output of the customize build command. That's the first thing we uh, actually added now. Depending on your environment, you might also want to add prefixes or suffixes to the names of your resources. So again, if I look at my uh, redis.yaml, see that the name of my service is called redis. Well, using this name prefix and the suffix, this name will be changed into dev-redis-001. Uh, of course, fully optional. You don't have to use these prefixes or these suffixes but it can be uh, something that you want to do, yeah? So with this uh, already been done, 
we can already run a customize build to see what the effect of this is. So if I run customize build in the folder that contains this customization.yaml file, I get a bigger YAML output. And as you can see, if you look at the namespace that was added to all the resources, you'll find it here. Yeah, that's one thing that Customize did for us. And the name has been changed by adding this prefix and this suffix. And this has been done for all the names uh, and all the objects that we create uh, that's output by this um, by the Customize build command. Good. Now, Customize can also create new resources for us, specifically config maps and secrets. Now, I'm not going to discuss the secret generator because it works the same way as the config map generator. And I'll just focus on that one. So here we're telling Customize that we want a config map called test config map to be created. The behavior is create. There are other behaviors as well. For example, modifying existing config maps, for instance. And with ENVs and then referencing a file, we tell the config map generator to take out key value pairs from this file and add them as data to the config map. So the file app config, what does it contain? Well, it contains this server equals Redis. And of course, on multiple lines, I can add uh, other key value pairs. Yeah, that's the config map generator. The secret generator is doing the same thing, but in this case, based on an app.secret file. So if we get that out, we see there the secret should be called super secret and the super secret value is password. Great. What happens when we run customize build with these options? Let's just do that. Customize build. And let's check out where the config map is. Should be near the top. And here indeed we see that the config map was created. Of course, the namespace is added. And also note that the config map, the name of the config map was altered with the prefix and the suffix as well. Now probably you're thinking, what are these annotations and labels that were added to this config map? And by the way, the secret has the same annotations and labels and you can see the secret, the base64 encoded value here. Great, so both config map and secret were created. Now, why do we have these annotations and labels? Well, if you check in the customization.yaml, you can specify some options for the generators. You find that here. First of all, it's important to note that when a name is given to a config map or a secret, normally customize is adding a hash to the name. I disable that here with the disable name suffix hash true. And of course, the labels that you see here in the output, they are coming from the generator options as well, where I specified, yeah, please add these labels here, these city labels, which are just an example. Great, so that should be clear. You can create config maps and secrets uh, and set the options for these, yeah, for these generators. The documentation will give you other options as well. Uh, for example, there's an option where you actually replace ENVs by files, and then the files will be included in the, uh, in the config map. So there are much more options available. Look at the documentation to see uh, what that actually, what those actually are. Now, if you looked closely in, um, in this video to uh, the, the contents of my real-time YAML, you see that my real-time YAML actually contains, for the environment variable Redis host, it contains variables. The Redis service variable and the Redis namespace variable. If you think of it, I have to refer here to the name of the Redis service and the namespace for correct DNS name resolution. If I don't have anything else to find out what the name of a service is, just using Kubernetes DNS in this case. But of course, I'm modifying the names of my services. I'm modifying them with, for example, a prefix and a suffix. And I also have changed the namespace. So one option, there are other options to fix this, but one option is to use variables and then to generate values for these variables inside customization.yaml. And that's what the vars option is doing. So we create a variable called Redis service, and we just refer to an object in our YAML. So in this case, we're saying we refer to a service object. We use the original name of that service object, which is Redis. 
And without specifying anything else, the vars um, uh, functionality will retrieve the metadata.name value. So the name of the service will be put as a value inside the Redis service variable. Of course, to retrieve the namespace, we have to work a little bit differently. Uh, we create the variable here, Redis namespace. The object reference is the same. We want to reference the service called Redis. But instead of retrieving by default metadata name, we retrieve the metadata.namespace field. So the name of our Redis service and the name of our namespace should normally have been added here. Well, indeed, when we run customize build and we look in our output of customize, we'll see indeed that the value of the environment variable Redis host has been correctly filled in here. Redis service is dev-redis-001 and the namespace is my ns. So that works perfectly. Great. Let's clear this out. Another thing you might want to do is for a specific environment, you might want to set the number of replicas of a deployment. And because that's so common, you probably or they didn't really want you to make a patch for this. So they have the replicas option, where in name you refer to the name of your deployment and the count is of course the number of replicas. So yes, my original name of my deployment in my realtime.yaml is realtime. So I don't have to worry about the prefix and suffix that I configured in my customization.yaml. And the original, the original count of replicas, if we just check this out, real-time YAML, you'll see that the number of replicas is two. That's what's in my base file, so to speak. So if I run customize build again, and I check the output, you will see that the deployment of my real-time service is now using the value replicas three. So that's also set by this option over here. And of course, another common setting is that you might want to modify the image in your deployment. So in this case, if you look at my customization.yaml, I'm actually saying with the images option, hey, the image with the name hebaka slash flux app, I want you to use a new tag for that, replace the tag of that image. Okay, let's check it out. If I'm looking at the original value in realtime.yaml, you will see that we are using hebaka flux app 1.0.2, but I'd like it to be the older version. Well, when I'm using customize build, you will see that the output should now reflect 1.0.0. Let's check it out. Let's find the image reference. And here you can see the image Gbaka flux app now has a new tag of 1.0.0. So this is great. I have everything now. Let's just apply this to our cluster. And that's of course easy. We can do customize build. We can pipe this to uh, kube control, but it's aliased with K. K apply minus F and then a dash. So this sends the output to kube cuddle apply. When I do so, you'll see that everything is unchanged uh, except the actual deployment because I modified the image tag uh, now uh, it was different before, uh, but you can clearly see that we have now used customize build and the output of customize build and apply this to our cluster. And that's exactly the same thing that we want to do with Flux v2. We'll have a bunch of base YAML files and we'll apply customizations to them. And then of course, deploy this to our cluster. We've come to the end of our presentation now about uh, customize. And I think with these basics uh, laid out, we are ready for the next video to understand better how we uh, deploy customizations using Flux V2. When we deploy these customizations, we will use all the features you see there down below. So the bases and overlays, the patches, the namespace, right until uh, also modifying the uh, the image in our in our deployment but that will be for another video uh, hope to see you then stay tuned take care